What's up guys, my name is Ryan and I recently returned from exploring the beautiful country of Portugal and I want to share with you my favorite places, so here's my Portugal Top 25. Portugal is home to some of Europe's most stunning landscapes, the country is full of intriguing history, incredible coastline, and the world's biggest waves. From the lush islands of the Azores to the scenic Algarve coast, Portugal has so much to offer. Let's start this video off at Praia do Ursa. Located on Sintra's coast, about 50 minutes from Lisbon, this is probably my favorite beach in all of Portugal. Now one reason I like it so much is for its rock formations. There's several of them and they look like wizard hats. Now to get to the beach, it's a decent hike. It only took us like 20 or 30 minutes to get down. It is just a little steep descent, but it's nothing you can't handle. Now when you reach the beach, I was just amazed by the rock formations. They're just huge and really fun to walk around. The water was a little bit chilly, but would be so nice on a hot day. Now if you can, it's an amazing place to go for sunset. The beach lights up with an orange glow and it's just hard to beat. Couldn't recommend this beach enough. Now another really cool spot above the beach is Cabo do Roca. There's a scenic lighthouse up there and there's lots of trails that you can walk around to get amazing views of the sea cliffs. And there are some other beaches you can hike down to. I mean, this area is amazing and you definitely gotta check it out. While we're still in Sintra, let's head over to the Pena Palace. It's a stunning, colorful castle that sits on top of the Sintra Mountains. The palace was completed in 1854 and today it stands as one of the seven wonders of Portugal. Now to get there, you can take a taxi to the top or you can also hike up from the town of Sintra and that's what we did. It's a really beautiful hike that you go through some gardens. When we reached the palace, I was just amazed by the architecture and the colors. It was so vibrant and I love the contrast between the red and yellow structures. I will say it was extremely packed like there were so many people so if you do go I recommend visiting really early right when it opens or avoid going in August. Now right next to the palace is the castle of the Moors. It was built all the way back in the 8th and 9th centuries. I actually like this place a lot better than the Pena Palace. There was way less people and there was just like so much history. I was fascinated how well it was preserved. One of my favorite things that you could do is you can walk around the perimeter of the fortress and get a little taste of what it must have felt like to live in Portugal during medieval times. Another historical nearby place is the Quinta de Regalaria. It's home to this inverted tower which has a fascinating history regarding the initiation ceremony for the Templar Knights. Now afterwards we're going to visit the city of Lisbon. Now if you're coming into Portugal, chances are you'll fly into this airport. It's a great starting point for your Portugal adventures. Now being one of the oldest cities in Europe, Lisbon is just full of so much culture and history. One of my favorite features of Lisbon is the Sanctuary of Christ the King Monument. It reminds me of a mixture of Rio de Janeiro and San Francisco with that massive bridge that goes over the Tagus River. The Commerce Square is another beautiful spot to explore. The Balem Tower is another really cool monument that served as a point of embarkation for Portuguese explorers. Lisbon is such a historic city and I have have to say it's one of the most beautiful capitals in all of Europe. Afterwards, we're going to visit the medieval town of Obidos. Now, located about an hour's drive from Lisbon, Obidos is this romantic medieval town protected by an impressive stone wall. Around the year 713 AD, the Moors established a fortification here, and in the 12th century, the king of Portugal reclaimed the land. Obidos was later gifted to the queen, and for the following centuries, Obidos received special treatment from the queens of Portugal who remodeled and enriched the village throughout the Middle Ages. Today, Obidos is one of Portugal's most well-preserved medieval towns. Now, one of my favorite features of Obidos is the wall that surrounds it. When you enter the town's gates, there's a stairway on your left, and you can walk around on the top of the medieval walls. I climbed on top of one of the lookout towers and just got amazing views of Obidos and the surrounding area. I mean, it just blows my mind how well everything is preserved, even though everything is like five, 600 years old. After we just had a great time just wandering through the alleyways, I mean, if you're really into medieval destinations, you gotta give Obidos a visit. Now, afterwards, we're gonna visit one of the most gnarly coastlines in the world, Nazare. Located just a 90 minute drive from Lisbon, Nazare is this historical coastal town that is famous for being home to the biggest surfable wave on the planet. Every winter season, the waves can be over 100 feet high. The reason the waves get so big is because there's this underwater canyon right before the swell hits the beach and just creates this massive wave. 
Now the best place to see the wave is from the 16th century fort of St. Michael the Archangel. It's located right in the cliff and I'm surprised it hasn't collapsed in the ocean after being battered by the sea for so many centuries. Now I was here during the summertime so there was like hardly any waves but I would love to come back between October to March to witness the real record swells. Now afterwards we're going to visit the Berlingus Islands. Now located about 10 kilometers off of Portugal's west coast, the Berlingus Islands are are an archipelago full of history. Over the ages, many shipwrecks took place here. So in the 16th century, monks built a monastery and settlement to aid shipwrecked sailors, but it was eventually abandoned. In the 17th century, a fort was constructed on the monastery's ruins to build a coastal defense against threats such as pirates. Today, you can take a 40 minute ferry ride from the town of Paniche and just spend the day exploring the great Berlinga Island. You can go snorkeling and just walk around. Definitely is a great day trip if you're in the area. After, we're gonna visit Tomar. Tomar is an idyllic Portuguese city full of charm and was the last town commissioned for construction by the Templar Knights. The crowning feature of the city is the Convent of Christ. It was completed in the 12th century by the Templar Knights. The monastery was integral for defending the Christian kingdom against the Moors. I'm just blown away by how big it is. The stone wall that surrounds the castle must have took ages to construct. Another fascinating medieval place to visit is the Castle Alabria. Located about a 50 minute drive from Tomar, the Castle Alabria was constructed in the 12th century. Over the ages, the castle started to lose its military importance and it was damaged extensively by French invasions. Today it has been restored and I just love how it's integrated with the city. Afterwards, we're gonna visit the university town of Coimbra. Located about two hours north from Lisbon, Coimbra is one of Portugal's most culturally vibrant cities. It was originally a Roman settlement, but during the Middle Ages, it became the capital of Portugal from 1131 to 1255. Now, the oldest university in Portugal, which was originally started in Lisbon, was relocated to Coimbra in 1308. And today it's one of the oldest universities in continuous operation in the world. I would have loved to study there. Now while you're in Coimbra, you can explore the university grounds and botanical gardens. I mean, just such a lovely university town. Now afterwards, we're gonna head to the mountains to visit Serra da Estrela. Now located about a two hours drive from Coimbra, Serra da Estrela is the highest point in continental Portugal with a height of 1,993 meters. The peak isn't jagged like something you see in the Alps. It's basically the highest point on a plateau, but what's great about it is that you can drive there, so no hiking involved. And there's some really cool observatory towers on top. If you go in the winter time, chances are it'll be covered in snow and you can ski at the nearby Estrela Ski Resort. Afterwards, we're gonna to venture to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean to visit the archipelago of the Azores. Now the Azores are a group of nine islands like none other. They remind me of a hybrid of New Zealand and Hawaii with rolling pastures and green scenery. I mean, it's basically the Garden of Eden in real life. The largest island on the Azores is São Miguel. One of the most stunning places on the island is Lagoa das Sete Cidades. It's a twin lake situated in the crater of a volcano. One lake is green while the other is blue. The nearby Santiago Lake is also a really unique place. Now another one of my favorite islands on the Azores is Pico. It's home to the highest point in all of Portugal called Mount Pico. It's a stratovolcano that reaches 2,351 meters high and at last erupted in 1720. I just can't believe how huge it is. If you're up for a challenge, you can hike to the top. There's also seven more other islands you can explore. I'll do a separate video soon and include them all. I mean, it's just hard to beat the scenery of this volcanic archipelago. After the Azores, we're gonna head back to the mainland to visit the region of Algarve. Now the Algarve region is the southernmost part of Portugal. It's famous for its good weather, high standard of living, and incredible coastline. One of the most beautiful towns is Lagos. It's an ancient maritime town with more than 2,000 years of history. Today, it's one of the most visited cities in Portugal. Now, what I love about Lagos is that it's located right next to some of the best beaches. The coast is home to uniquely shaped sea cliffs filled with hidden coves and sea caves. One of the most interesting places on the Algarve coast is Bengali Cave. It's this incredible grotto with this opening on top. You can only access it by taking a kayak, paddleboard, or boat tour. Another scenic spot on the coast is Ponta da Piedade. It's full of countless grottos and sea arches to explore. After, we're gonna visit the city of Porto. 
Located on the coast of northern Portugal, Porto is the second largest city in the country after Lisbon. It's one of the oldest European centers as it developed as an important commercial port during Roman times. Today, it's one of Europe's most vibrant cities. I just love how colorful all the buildings and roofs are. The Louise First Bridge is one of the most recognizable features of the city as it spans across the Douro River. Now while we're on the topic of the river, I recommend taking a boat or a car up the Douro Valley to witness some of the best wine country in the world. Wine has been made in this valley for over 2,000 years. The region is full of endless terrace vineyards that line the powerful Douro River. Now afterwards, we're going to visit the Paneda Xerez National Park. Now located in northern Portugal, right on the Spain border, about an hour's drive from Porto, Pineda Gerais is the only national park in all of Portugal, and I have to say it's just absolutely beautiful up here. It's full of granite mountains, pristine waterfalls, and scenic lakes. There's also beautiful towns and villages in the area. I really like this one town called Lindoso. It has a medieval castle with these interesting little stone huts called Horeos. They are used to store grain and have been used since the 13th century. Afterwards, we're going to visit the nearby Guimares. Now located about 40 minutes from Porto, Guimarães is one of the best preserved medieval settlements in Portugal. It was founded back in the 9th century and is often referred to as the birthplace of Portugal because it is believed that Portugal's first king, Afonso Henriques, was born here. Today, Guimarães has been listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it's easy to see why. One of my favorite features of the city is the Guimarães Castle. It was built in the 10th century to defend the monastery from Moorish and Viking attacks. It stands as a national symbol and is also referred to as the cradle of Portugal. After exploring northern Portugal, we're going to head back to the Atlantic Ocean to visit the island of Madeira. I just got done spending a week on this island and I just loved it so much. It's located right off the northwest coast of Africa. The island was claimed by Portugal in 1419. Now Madeira is known for its idle climate and just stunning coastline. One of my favorite beaches on Madeira is Ponta do Sol. It's this beautiful town that reminded me of Italy's Amalfi Coast. The beach there wasn't sandy, instead it had smooth rocks and the swimming was spectacular in the crystal clear waters. The main reason I wanted to go here was to do some cliff jumping. On the east side there's this pier area with this super cool arch bridge and then there's some little cliffs to jump off. I sent a few jumps and it was just freaking fun. The water felt so nice and it was such an enjoyable spot. After we relaxed on the beach and did some more swimming and just enjoyed the sunset, definitely a place you gotta visit. Another amazing spot on Madeira is the Fanal Forest. Now this has to be one of the most magical places on Madeira. It's this forest located in the highlands of the island and one thing that makes it so special is that it's often covered by the clouds. Something that I just loved about the forest was its trees. Some are over 500 years old and they look like giant bonsai trees. I mean it really feels like you're in a fairy tale forest just waiting to run into some mythical creature. Even though I didn't see any unicorns there, I ran into some photogenic cows just grazing away. Now one of my most enjoyable memories on Madeira was just walking around for hours exploring the forest. It was just pure peace and bliss. I mean I just freaking love this place. If you're into scenic churches, there's a really beautiful hilltop chapel in the town of Sao Vicente. The church was built in 1948 to celebrate the end of World War II. Now it's pretty easy to get to the church. You drive up to the base and then there's these stairs you can hike up. Now the view up there was really astounding and the church is just pretty cool too. For our final destination, we're going to visit my favorite place, not just on Madeira, but all of Portugal, Pico do Arriero. Now, I love this spot so much, I came up four times. Now it's located about a 40 minute drive from Funchal. Pico do Arriero is the third highest point on the island with an elevation of 1,818 meters, which is pretty wild considering how small Madeira is. Now since it's so high up, you'll often be in or above the clouds, which creates the most epic landscape. Now to reach Pico do Arriero, you don't need a hike. You can drive a car to the top and from there you can go explore the mountains. I was surprised how well maintained the trail was. It's a stone path with car wires for a majority of the way, which mean, is so nice. If you hike for about 15 minutes, you'll reach the first lookout point called the Miraduro do Nino da Manta. 
Now the views there are just absolutely incredible. It has a phenomenal vantage point. We went up here for sunrise and sunset and both were amazing. But I'd say sunset was my favorite because there was like hardly anyone up there and basically had the whole place to ourselves. I mean, it just felt like a dream up there with the clouds and the setting sun. It gave me such a rush and was such a good reminder of why I love traveling. I just love this country so much. Well, that is it for my Portugal top 25. Let me know where your favorite place is in Portugal in the comments below. I also started a relaxation channel where I post hour-long films with calming music to bring some peace and nature in your life. I've done films on the Azores, Madeira, and Portugal, and I think you'll enjoy them all. You can find me on TikTok and Instagram at Shirley.Films. It's Ryan, and we will see you later.